photographing snow and ice. Five tips coming up how to photograph snow. Hi there, I'm Peter Forsgaard, an Olympus visionary from Helsinki, Finland. And as you can see, there is nice snowfall and a lot of snow in Helsinki right now. But before we get into the snow photography, please consider to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified when there's a new video online. My channel is all about you getting to be a better photographer and I post two videos a week. But let's go and start with the five tips and remember to watch it all the, all the way to the end because there's going to be an extra tip in the end. But let's go and see how it goes. Tip number one, when making the exposure in a snowy conditions, the snow is white but your uh, light meter in your camera thinks it's gray. So that's why you need to overexpose your image according to your camera's meter about one or two stops. I'll show you what it happens if you use automatic and without any compensation and then I show you a picture with exposure compensation with plus two. Okay, now I'm taking a picture with what the exposure meter tells me and then I'll take plus two. And as you can see from the image, the one with the with a trusted the meter, the snow it's too gray for my likings. And with the plus two, it's white as it should be. And it is white now. But let's go to the tip number two. And when it's a lot of snow on the ground, look for really nice shapes that the snow makes. And as you can see this car, this is going to be make an excellent photograph from the other side of this car. And of course statues, uh, garbage bins, bicycles and whatnot can make a really really nice different kind of shapes and can even make a subject look different than what it actually is. But I will go to the other side of the road and take a picture of the car. Just a second, we ride back. All right, now we're on the other side. We have to be careful when there's a lot of traffic and big snowbank, so I won't get a run over a car. Okay, let's see. We can see the... Let's turn the camera on first. And, and let's wait for the cars to go by. Actually, I don't like the winter weather at all, but what do you do? That's what happens, and you can't really do about anything about it. And what I want to do, I want to come closer to the car, but we'll need to wait, wait, wait for the cars. No, it's not going to happen. Maybe I'll crop from this image. It's safer. Never risk anything for a photograph. I don't want to be in the middle of the traffic. See you in a second with tip number three. Just a minute. It's not only snow that makes excellent shapes. It's also ice. And there are several places where ice can make really nice shapes. Are the icicles that are hanging from ceilings, then there is ice on the ocean. Usually the seashore or the sea line, whatever you call it, it's it's kind of crispy ice. And those are those make really, really excellent shapes. And then of course, be very careful if you go under the icicles because they might fall on your head and that's gonna hurt. But let's look at some images before we go to the tip number four. This was tip number three. And four next, but let's look at some images first. I'm standing in the middle of a snowbank. But then tip number four. Well, this is four fingers, yes. If you want to get creative, try to use different white balance. Try to put it on tungsten or try to put it on daylight or whatever you like so that you can get a different tone. 
to your images. If you want to make snow really yellow and moody, then you can use that kind of white balance. And then if you want to make the weather look colder than it is, try to push your images a bit to the blue side. If you don't know what white balance is, there's a video that I made a couple of weeks ago about white balance. So be sure to watch that if that's a new concept to you. And then when it's the weather like this, it's usually quite cold. Right now it's not very, very cold. But when you go outside and photograph snow, keep warm. Have a hat, some gloves, and proper shoes. Mine aren't really, if I would go to the woods, these aren't any proper shoes. But in the city, these are a good compromise. And then keep the batteries warm. So you have a battery in the camera and it will lose in a very, very cold weather. It will lose its power. So have a spare one, but keep it in your pocket somewhere where it's warm so it can keep it it's uh, juice in it and then when this battery from the camera will be okay when it's warm again so that's one important thing and then if you go outside for a long long time have a bottle of warm drink with you tea coffee whatever you like to drink but let's go inside i'm getting a bit cold and annoyed about the snow see you inside when you get inside after a days of shoot in the outside when it's cold it's better to put your camera inside your backpack or whatever bag you have and leave the bag inside and let it get warm before you take your camera out because otherwise your lens will be all foggy and of course if the camera gets all wet it better be a good weather seating like my Olympus has but now I'm gonna go and get a cup of coffee okay that was fun to do some images in the snow and I hope you have a chance to go and make some images in the snow, but hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.